So this episode we're going to talk about the oscilloscope and we're going to talk about what it is and why we use it and why we waited so long to introduce this instrument um, and why it doesn't make sense to use it when we're looking at DC circuits. Okay, So the oscilloscope is simply an instrument that displays voltages versus time. So your DMM or any voltmeter, ammeter, or ohmmeter is doing some internal calculations with its measurement to display the voltage or the current or the resistance. An oscilloscope is sampling that over time and then giving us a graphical representation of what that looks like. So for a DC circuit with a constant voltage source with a constant current <clears throat> is going to look very uninteresting because all we're going to see is a straight line across the screen. So that's not very useful in our analysis. However, for AC circuits, because we know that they are driven by either sinusoidal or triangular or square wave, some repeatable um, periodic function, right? So that is kind of interesting to look at because now we can see what's the maximum amplitude, what's the minimum amplitude. Is it riding on a DC offset or not? Has it been adjusted you know, away from zero, either positive or negative? So there's other things that we can look at there. We can look at the quality of the signal. Um, you know, there's all kinds of things that we can do and we can you know, check one signal against another signal and you know, depending on how many channels you have, you could look at, you know, potentially if you get into the logic analyzer, sort of end of the oscilloscope you could have you know hundreds of channels that you're watching at the same time so it just depends on what the application is and what you're using it for and why you're using it all right but it does make more sense to use it with an ac signal because it does change amplitude over time sinusoidal signals you know we, we talked about how to calculate the instantaneous voltage at any point in time uh, you can you know with the cursor you could also have your circuit displayed if you were measuring it and uh, be able to detect those points in time and what the amplitude is as well. Okay, so uh, it's an instantaneous representation of whatever signal that you're trying to look at. Okay, so and it says available with analog or digital internals, and <clears throat> most are now digital though. Um, you know, analog, you can still buy them, and there's still companies that resell old ones, but for the most part, everybody uses digital ones today because, uh, in a lot of cases, they have them connected to some type of uh, either like a LabVIEW program or they're, they're doing some kind of data acquisition, and it's a lot easier to do it with a digital device like a digital multimeter or digital oscilloscope anything like that you're going to be able to trans transfer information back and forth with other instruments much easier okay um, and so in some cases you can even just use USB whereas some of the older analog devices maybe maybe they did have you know it, there, there's a, a certainly a a market out there for the analog and the analog people love the old scopes um, you know and I've, I've met people before that have uh, you know have been in the game a lot longer than I have and uh, they love the old analog scopes and they say that they're you know no matter how good the digital ones are they're never gonna be as good as the analog ones because the analog ones are always more accurate so you know but I think they just they like it because that's what they've been using for decades and decades. But I like the new ones because they are more versatile and, um, you know, I think they're a little bit more dependable. And, you know, the way that the screen is displayed, it's usually an LCD display or, um, you know, something like that that's a little bit more crystal clear. Um, but, you know, they all essentially accomplish the same thing. They're trying to measure some signal, get its amplitude, get its frequency, and let you see the shape of it and a, a graph of voltage versus time. These days they do have small um, small devices that connect to your smartphone or PC or your um, you know pretty much anything that you use to look at stuff online these days right so that could be a tablet that could be uh, a laptop it could be your MacBook pretty much anything right so there's little USB devices that can plug in and they have a display, they have 
uh, buttons that can do different measurements. Some of them connect to a software program on your PC. And, you know, so for less than 200 bucks, you can get, uh, you know, like a home oscilloscope or a hobby oscilloscope. Uh, but I've also calibrated ones when I was in industry that were upwards of twenty, twenty-five thousand dollars. So, just depends on you know what kind of precision and what kind of accuracy that you need. Sometimes, especially for anything that we do in circuits classes, you know, something that's a little bit less involved has less things going on inside that make it more accurate. Uh, we just need to get an idea of what's happening with fairly good accuracy, and we can get that with you know a cheaper device so in terms of what gets displayed um, it is a, sort of a grid fashion here where uh, we have you know in this case this signal it's it's a sine wave repeating over and over and over the the peak to the bottom peak here so we have one two three four five six divisions <clears throat> from top to bottom so when we're talking about the amplitude or the voltage measurement, voltage is on the Y axis. So here we have a peak to peak voltage of six divisions. So we have to know what the value is of this block right here from, from one line to the next line. And we set that ourselves. In this case, it's five volts per division. So if I have a five volt increase or decrease as I move up the grid or down the grid, that would mean if I start down here, I've got 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. So that would be a 30 volt peak to peak voltage measurement. Okay. In terms of um, its RMS value, that's just its peak to peak, right? So that means that 1, 2, 3, it's 3 volts peak. Okay. I'm sorry, not, not 3 volts, but it is 15 volts peak because these are 5. So 5, 10, 15. So 15 volts peak. If you take that times 0 0.707, that will give you the RMS value. And so to display the RMS value, you would have to choose that measurement function on your um, oscilloscope. Okay. And most all of them have, especially the digital ones, have that available as one of the slots that you can push to have it measure. So the scope trigger is the point at which you know if this is a repeatable signal what point along this do you want it to start in other words where's it, it you know if it's going to determine if it has a frequency it needs to pick a start point and an end point right to determine what one cycle has, has when one cycle has been accomplished so you have to choose a point you know either on the up or the down you know on on the rising side or on the falling side of this cuz you could do either one and then that be the start point or the trigger point. <clears throat> so it says it allows a stable non-jumping wave display. If you move it too far into where you could pick up some noise, uh, then you get a very messy signal and it runs across the screen. So sometimes if you're trying to fix that running, uh, you need to adjust your scope trigger one way or the other. So here you can see when I say the positive edge or the rising edge, I mean you know, this signal right here if, if we come up this way, that's the rising edge, and here's the falling edge. That's the negative edge or the positive edge. Okay, so you just have to adjust where your start point is. If you want to measure frequency, this is one way to do it. Uh, I'm just going to go ahead and skip to number four here. Just read the frequency number from your smart digital scope. So, you know, when we talk about this grid, I kind of blew past that, but, you know, if you had one that wasn't digital, you know you could still measure what the peak to peak voltage was or you know if it wasn't one if it wasn't a full you know if it didn't go all the way to the top here if it only went about maybe halfway or three quarters or something then you could get a ruler out and measure how many centimeters it is from here to here and get a better estimation of what that voltage added on would be so you know when you see this here it says adjust the 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 time division control to obtain at least one cycle. Count the number of centimeters covered on the horizontal axis. Okay, it said multiply the time division by the number of centimeters. So, you know, this grid and being able to see the grid on here, not only does it tell you what these voltage per divisions are, um, you can also use it with actual physical measuring devices and approximate what the voltage would be. But like I said, 
these days you just read the frequency number from the scope because it's going to have it on the in the bottom right hand corner at least for all the ones that I have seen so it's always on the screen so in terms of the time measurement now left to right we talked about top to bottom that's amplitude in the y direction on the x direction as is usually the case we have time so as we go forward in time here's what this signal looks like and here's a sine wave right it repeats over and over and so here if we want to say what the frequency of this signal is really you want to know what the period is because that's the part that you can actually measure right because you can say here's how long it takes to complete one cycle so that is the period and then once you know the period then you just see how many you can cram into one second uh, and that will give you the frequency in Hertz so in this case we have so these are all microseconds over here so 0.2 micro is um, is down in the um, nanosecond range and so as we move up the dial here here's 50 micro this would be a hundred micro 200 micro 500 micro 1 milli and then on and on up to 100 milliseconds so right now we're at 0.2 milliseconds which means that we're at 200 micro so this is one two three four five divisions wide so five divisions times 200 micro per division would give us uh, one millisecond okay so five divisions 0.2 milliseconds per division gives us one millisecond total so that's how long the period is and then as you know from the first part of chapter 13 to find the frequency you take one over the period so if we do that one over one millisecond gives us one kilohertz so this signal has a one kilohertz frequency now if we were in the lab this is the one that we would be using and so it's a two channel TDS if you uh, go to other colleges in the state um, I have seen that they use the exact same model they just have the four channel version so uh, this is a very very popular one every channel has its own color so as you as you'll see in a second on the display this isn't this isn't a good representation of that because this is black and white but the actual uh, photo sh photos that we have of it show the difference between the two channels so um, just kind of a brief explanation you know here's channel one up and down here so this is the the BNC probe connector which we'll talk about BNC here in a second this is the voltage per division knob so this adjusts one way or the other uh, if we go back to this one so that's this adjustment knob And then right here, this is going to be moving it, okay, up and down. So this is position on the screen, okay. So you can actually, you know, with, without changing the zero reference, you can move it up and down on the screen just to put it in a different position. It doesn't alter anything about the signal, okay. So you choose the scaling, the voltage scaling, the the Y scaling, if you will, and then you also connect your probe to this channel. This one is completely it operates in a silo outside of this so it's got its own color it's got its own probe connector it's got its own voltage per division so just because you see two signals on the screen that look identical and they look like they're the same signal one of these could have a volts per division that's different than the other and it's just because of the way it's scaled on the screen it looks like it's identical but it's really not so you always have to make sure that you're looking at what the scaling or what the volts per division are on the screen for that particular signal okay so it's got its own menu and it's got its own position knob as well so you can move these on top of each other if you wanted to see what's happening you know if you wanted to see what what phase shift is happening or if you want to see if they're you know in phase or out of phase or whatever so um, if you want to adjust the timing left to right notice that there is only one set of controls for this so whereas you can scale your voltage individually for each channel you only have one scaling for the time mechanism so when you change this it changes both channels okay so uh, this is the horizontal seconds per division so this changes how much time there is between each division on the screen and even though this is a digital screen you still will see the grid on there you have the option to take that off but I think it's helpful to to have it on there when you're viewing this so anyway you can change 
you know, it, it looks like it expands or contracts when you do that. Uh, but all it's doing is it's just looking at a, either a bigger window of time or a shorter window of time where things look like they're changing more quickly or, or more slowly. So you just have to, you know, reference what this is saying versus what the actual frequency is here. Okay. And then this is also a position knob, but this is a horizontal position. And so you can actually move the signal left and right uh, as well. Okay. And then this is kind of like what I always call the get out of jail free card. <clears throat> if you've adjusted these knobs to the point that you don't recognize the signal and you can't get it back and you don't know what you did, uh, this is the auto set or restore to default button that uh, is very popular among students. So uh, if you you know if you ever do get a chance to to put your hands on one of these, and I'm, you will have to if you continue on into double et, obviously. But you know if you get yourself whacked out and you don't know how to get yourself back, if you just hit auto set, that goes back to all default settings. So this is what it looks like with the actual signal hooked up to it. And you can see here that on the screen all the time, they there's one, two, three, four, five slots over here that can change depending on which menu view you're in. And then at the bottom here, this stuff is always displayed. So over here on the left, this tells you for channel one, you know, channel one is this color, this yellow. It's going to be different in the next slide for channel two. But channel one is at 500 millivolts per division. So it tells you what it is on there. If you notice on here, there's no there's no tick marks anywhere on this. This is just a digital switch. That's all it is. And it's just selecting either to the right or to the left. That's the only thing it registers. There is no dial on here. So you have to look on the screen and know what volts per division that you're at. This one in, in the middle here is your timing scaling and so this one says 500 microseconds so the implication here is it's 500 microseconds per division left to right so uh, just from inspection here I've got one two three four four divisions tall peak to peak and I'm at 500 millivolts per division so this is a so 500 millivolts one volt 1.52 this is a two volt peak to peak which is a one volt peak, okay? Because each division is 500 millivolts. In terms of how long it takes to complete one cycle, I've got one, two. It takes two divisions left to right to complete one cycle. So that's 500 microseconds per division. So 500 micro, one milli. So the period of this is one millisecond, which means that the frequency down here in the bottom right is one kilohertz. Okay, so again, this stuff is displayed no matter what. If you want this other stuff, the peak to peak, the period, uh, the cycle, RMS, the, and the frequency here, those are things that you can adjust. And you can also put other measurements over here to the right. And that's standard with most oscilloscopes. This is if you have both channels displayed at the same time. Notice that all of the, the channel one stuff remains yellow and now the channel two volts per division which they happen to be on the same scaling in this picture uh, but they don't always and that can cause problems sometimes so this one 500 millivolts right so that's one two so that means that this is one volt peak to peak 500 millivolts peak for the frequency Right? Assuming it's on the same, it's in the same circuit, then it should have exactly the same frequency, which is why this hasn't changed down here. So again, one, two. It takes two divisions left to right to complete one cycle. So it's still 500 microseconds per division. So that means it's one millisecond period, one kilohertz frequency. In terms of the scope probes and how they attach, it's a little bit different than the DMM leads. You've got this BNC connector, which is a push and turn mechanism that locks it in place. So you can't yank these out of the oscilloscope. So it says, make sure the probe grounds, ground clips are only at one point in the circuit, the same as the supply ground clip. So this, you know, that's where it connects to the actual oscilloscope. Here's the probe itself. And it's got a retraction mechanism, a retractable hook tip that, uh, is usually spring-loaded and allows you to attach to the leg 
of some component because the legs are very, very small and you don't want to have to have somebody hold, you know, like if you make a voltage measurement or, or you know, um, with a DMM, you have to hold the leads on the circuit unless you use clips. So this one has a clip built into it and it's spring loaded and it lets you attach to whatever node in the circuit you want to look at because that's what it's doing here. It's looking at a specific node. Uh, reference to ground so so one side of the probe is the node that you want to look at and then the other side goes to ground however you may have three or four channels and you don't want them all connected to the ground only connect one of the four or whatever because uh, you could get yourself a uh, ground loop if that happens so just connect one of them because they're all grounded internally okay so you don't want to create extra problems so they have this switch on them typically. Uh, sometimes they don't, but most of the time they're what we call switchable. And so it might be a 10x probe. It might be a 100x probe. Okay. So the 10x means the probe has a big 100 or 10 mega ohm series resistor inside to minimize circuit loading, so that you don't damage your oscilloscope. So you want to set them to that because it has this one in series, and you can't accidentally. You, you can still damage it, but it would take a pretty big uh, voltage uh, spike to make that happen. But anyway, it scales it down once it's inside to minimize that circuit loading. So that's a protection mechanism. And if you do have the switch on the side set to 10X, that's something that you need to put into the, you know, like you can see here, this probe is set at 10X in channel two. So each channel has its own menu and you have to go in and tell it whether you have a 10x or 100x because if you don't have them uh, set properly if they mismatch your readings will be off by a factor of 10 so if you expect a 5 volt measurement and you might measure 50 but that's just because the switch um, is in the wrong position so another useful thing that oscilloscopes are used for is, is comparing you know phase shift or measuring phase shift uh, and you can do that fairly easily, especially with the cursors and the, with the oscilloscope. Now, some of the newer ones, I think uh, you can, it will automatically tell you if there's a phase shift and measure it for you, some of the more advanced ones. But just even the old school digital ones, if you just line up, you know, if you wanted to see how far out of phase these two signals were, well, you could either measure from their points, right, their maximums, and put a cursor here and put a cursor here. And then you could measure the time difference between the two and then convert that to a degrees by saying, you know, if this is 360 degrees, you know, how long did it take for the next one to start? Okay, because obviously this black one is lagging behind the blue. So to do that, you have to know what's the period of this signal and then how far is it shifted over? So that would be your Y, your denominator. This would be your X. So it's like a percentage, right? So it's what percentage of 360 degrees is this in relation to this? Okay, because this is a complete 360 degree cycle. So this, that ratio of X to Y times 360 will give you your phase shift. And so that's something useful to know, especially if you're going to be looking at different types of signals in your uh, analysis. Okay. All right. So I think that's all I have to say on oscilloscope.